Hi, today I'm going to show you how to disassemble your snow so that you can remove your mesh. Um, it's actually pretty simple, it's just, it just does take a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. Um, what you're going to be needing is a long screwdriver, uh, something uh, longer than 6 inches, um, a flathead screwdriver, a small one works just fine, and then I like using an a, a electronic a screwdriver for taking off uh, some of the screws, I'll go over that in a bit. Uh, the first part. We're going to remove all of the covers for the for the screws that release the mesh. Um, to do that, it's fairly simple. I just use a flathead screwdriver. I go ahead and I stick it between here and I pull up and that releases it right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to want to do that to all of them right there. Um, remove all of these covers here, set them aside. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove all of them and I'll be right back for the next step. Okay, now that I've removed all of them, the next part is I'm going to be um, uh, removing the, the mesh from this upper side. There's two ways to do it. The easy way to do it, but it's time consuming, is taking off all of these screws and lifting all these anchors, which and then in terms releases the mesh. But uh, the fast way to do it is you kind of get your screwdriver, you pull this back here, Pull it, uh, pull it backwards, and as you're pulling it backwards, you pull up, and that releases this mesh. Um, it is a little bit tedious, but it's way faster than removing all of those screws and doing that uh, process uh, over and over again. Just make sure that you take your time, that you don't you know, make any holes on the mesh. Uh, once you get the hang of it, it's actually fairly simple and way less time consuming than removing those screws. Um, I would like to point out that if you really want to go ahead and deep, deep clean your snow, um, then you would go ahead and remove all these screws. And then what that would do is allow you to get underneath that sled and, and, and give it a really good deep clean. Um, for this example, I'm not going to do that. I just want to release this mesh so I can give it a decent cleaning and, um, and at the same time, uh, give it a whitening treatment to make it a little bit more. Uh, white um, as this particular mesh is already showing some pretty serious yellowing. Okay, so now it's been lifted, uh, the, the, the mesh is available um, to be moved out of the way. Um, as you can see here, we have like a lot of dust and things of that nature, so we can go kind of go ahead and use a vacuum to clean all that up. Uh, and clean it by hand. You can do that later and I'll show you exactly why um, in just a bit. Um, next part is we're going to release the mesh um, from the uh, from the outer ring and to do that it's fairly simple. There's going to be a piece of plastic tubing that's inside of here. Um, you want to go ahead and grab your screwdriver, uh, find that tubing and pry it out just like that. There's going to be four pieces of tubing, uh, one on each side. Um, you're going to remove them, remembering which ones are which, so this one belongs to this side, and this one belongs to this side, and then you're going to do that to the other two sides over here. These are a little bit longer. go. Once you've done that, there's usually a double-sided tape here or um, here and here. Um, what you want to do is kind of use your fingers to pry off this top piece. Um, you're going to pry it. It's, it's hooked in there um, by hand. Once you do that, you're going to do the same thing to the bottom piece. It's kind of hooked in there. Take your time and take it out. I try not to use any tools for this because there is um, the, the wires that, that run inside of there. Um, so I you know, try, like using my hands for this particular part. Just take your time. Um, it's not too hard, but sometimes they do get kind of stuck. You're going to do it all the way around to all the sides, just like that, and just like that. And that is going to release the mesh. Now, as you can see here, now we can go ahead and drop the mesh completely down. 
and now that gives you access, 360 degree access uh, to the uh, to the SNU. That makes it a lot easier for you to clean inside of there. I'm not gonna completely remove it right now because uh, it's just easier for me to wait for the next step. So I'm gonna move these out of the way and we're gonna move on to uh, the next step. Okay, the next part is I'm gonna go ahead and remove these six screws here. Um, they have a plastic washer underneath. Um, try not to lose it. If you do, it's no big deal. Um, just be cognizant of them. Go ahead and just remove all six. Fairly simple. And then once you remove all six, you're gonna remove uh, this metal tray on top. Um, well, as you can see here, this new uh, really needs a deep cleaning. It seems that there's could be mold on here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the wire harnesses. There's one that goes to the speaker. I'm just gonna gently disconnect that. There's one that goes uh, to the left sensor for the um, for the uh, snoo sack and there's one that goes to the right sensor for the snoo sack once we've disconnected all three of them some snoos have this center lock here uh, this one does uh, to take it off it's just fairly easy um, you're gonna get yourself a flathead screwdriver and um, with the flathead screwdriver you're gonna press down and twist at the same time. Um, so I had to get a little bit of a bigger flathead screwdriver. I wasn't expecting for this model to have a center lock. Uh, but yeah, just get a bigger one, get it pushed down and twist. There you go. So you can see it's kind of the keyhole. So it goes in like this, you push down, you twist to lock it to the right, push down, twist to the left to unlock it. Fairly simple. Um, we'll go ahead and set this to the side. Some of the older snoos also have a, uh, a circuit board that's attached here with adhesive. You can just use a hair, uh, a hair blow dryer to loosen that adhesive and then you can just gently remove that circuit board and you'll pass it through here. You're gonna lift this up uh, once you move the harnesses out of the way. Um, just like that. So once you move that out of the way, um, you're gonna go ahead and lift this up and you're gonna feed those three wires underneath this new. And then, The next part is I'm um, gonna remove these brown pieces of plastic here. And we're gonna set these to the side. This would be a good time for you to go ahead and inspect your uh, uh, inspect your O-rings, uh, inspect all these guys right here, just to make sure that they're intact. Uh, make sure that this bearing is moving smoothly. Um, and just to make sure that the overall health of this new is good. Um, and then obviously doing the deep cleaning to the whole interior. Um, the next up is we're gonna flip this, flip this new over and we're gonna remove the screws on the bottom side of the new. Okay, so this next part, we're gonna go ahead and take a long Phillips, uh, Phillips screwdriver. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen or remove all of this, all the screws that go in the exterior here, which is basically gonna be all of these screws. I think it's like 27 or 28, something, something like that. Basically, you're going to remove all of the screws except for the hex screws, which are these six. Don't touch these six. Remove everything else. What I like to do is I like to uh, unscrew them here. 
and then once they've all been unscrewed, I get the uh, snoo and I tilt it and I bang it a little bit and they all come out at one time. Obviously, it's a lot easier to do it on your floor so you won't lose any screws, but that I find is going to be the easiest way. I'm going to go ahead and screw all of these and I'll be back. Okay, so now that I've gone ahead and I have removed all of the screws, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the front and I'm going to see exactly uh, where the motor is. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because there is a wire harness, as you can see there, that connects uh, through from the top base to the bottom of the base. We want to be aware of that harness because it doesn't have very much slack. So what we're going to do is, we, now that we know that the wire harness is on this side, we are going to go to this side over here, and we're going to open it up. As you can see here, now we're going ahead and we're exposing um, uh, these hooks here that are what holds onto the mesh, okay? Um, on this side over here, I talked about the wire harness. So as you can see here, there is the wire harness. So since we know there the wire harness is, that's where the wire harness is at, I'm not gonna pull this too far open. Instead, I'm gonna use this side here to go ahead and loosen all these up. And this is where I'm gonna use my automatic screwdriver. I'm simply gonna insert it here and I'm gonna loosen it. And as I loosen it, you're gonna see that anchor is gonna start releasing the mesh. You see that? You can go ahead and completely remove the screw. What I like to do is I like to hold it for about five seconds and I do that for about for every single one. And I move on to the next one. And then once I've done that to basically all of them, um, I will come back and I will uh, remove the mesh from the actual hooks. Um, obviously being careful not to pry this too far open because we have the wire harness right there. Uh, so when you have to do this side, kind of just keep it tight. You want to keep it tight, but push this out of the way so you have access to that screw now. Just like that. Just like that. Okay. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll, when I have to do the other side, what I'll do is I'll put this base back in. I'll put the base back in where it belongs. As if I'm putting it back together, then I'll go ahead and I'll rotate it to the other side. Okay, now I've gone ahead and I have loosened all of these here. Uh, the next part is um, I'm going to uh, gently if you can see here, there's there's this piece of plastic strand where it, that's kind of what these hooks use. And there's three hooks. There's two going down, and then there's this one going up. So what I like to do is I kind of like to stick my my uh, my my thumb my fingers in here, and then unrelease the first one, and that releases the next one. Once you do the first one, they're all kind of very easy. You push down, release the first one, then the second one. Do the same thing over and over again. Just like that. And you're going to do it to all of them. Um, once you do that, this space is going to start releasing the mesh. So that you can just completely remove the mesh. Um, as you remove them, it gets a lot easier. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm not even using that much force. And it's removing all of these clips here. So I've gone ahead and I flipped it over. I'm going to do the last couple of these anchors here. Okay. Now I've gone ahead and I have completely removed it. Again. Now then uh, just remove the mesh here. And um, in a few minutes we have our snoo removed. I think this took me a total of uh, 10 minutes, our snoo mesh removed. So what we're gonna wanna do with this 
um, is uh, if you have any crazy spots, you're gonna want to use a baby safe spot treatment. Um, I've linked it in the links below. That's what we use, there's an organic one. It works really good. If you have like milk stains or stuff like that, let it sit for a little bit. Once it's done, we're gonna put it into a hand wash cycle in our washing machine. Um, I use a combination of baby OxyClean uh, along with a uh, baby safe OxyClean along with baby safe detergent. And then once I'm done with that, um, then I'll do a, I'll go ahead and I'll do a whitening treatment after that. Um, and if this if the mesh needs it, um, and that's linked below. It's a, it's a purple sh uh, shampoo solution, kind of like what you would use for like uh, your hair to keep it blonde or keep it uh, or take away the brassiness. The purple shampoo it's similar to that, and you can use that on fabrics. Uh, I've linked that uh, in my links as well. And um, I do not dry this. Uh, instead, what I do is. I let it air dry. So once you're done with your, your cycles, go ahead and let it air dry for about a day. Uh, once it's nice and dried, uh, we can go ahead and we can reassemble the snoo, put it back in its place. Um, once you wash it, sometimes what I do is if you like your, your snoo is very, um, very loose or it looks as if like there's like spots where maybe the baby could have put too much pressure and stretch out your snoo, I try to wash it in a hot cycle and that will go ahead and help this new uh, mesh go back to its original shape um, and give you that crisp look once again. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and we've cleaned the entirety of the inside of the snoo. So it looks great, not a speck of dust in there. And then the mesh just came out of the washer. We've let it air dry, looks great, nice and clean and white. Uh, the next part that we're going to do is we're going to fit the snoot over this uh, ring and we're going to start test fitting it uh, to put the plastic pieces right back in. Okay, so now I've laid out my four plastic pieces corresponding to which side they're going to go to. I'm going to grab my mesh and I'm going to look for the side that has the zipper. The side that has the zipper is going to line up with the side that has the rod going up and down. Okay, so zipper side goes on this side, so we're gonna grab it, and of course we're just gonna lay it over, just like that. And once that's done, once it's over this, we're going to open this up here, uh, where the rod goes. I'm gonna make sure that the rod is along that, along these two folding pieces. And we're gonna do that all the way around. As you can see here, we're gonna also make sure that we're lining up the sensors, these two sensors here, to the cutouts on the on the mesh. So we've done that. And we're gonna do the other side, just like this. And once we have it in there, the next piece is we're gonna tuck in. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and we've lined everything up. We're gonna start by uh, grabbing the center side first. Okay, now that we've lined it up, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get the bottom side. We get a small screwdriver, we're gonna get our, the bottom side, and we're gonna insert the bottom side, we're gonna tuck it in. So imagine this is the rod here, the C-channel. We're gonna grab the uh, bottom piece of the fabric and we're gonna tuck it in just like this. Okay, so we're going to do that, and in the event that we need to, we can also use a screwdriver to make sure it's nice and tucked in. So I'm tucking in, and as I tuck it in, I'm going to pull up to make sure it catches onto there. So I'm going to do that, and once all of that is done, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the top piece, and I'm going to stick in the top piece, and I'm going to tuck it in just like that. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing to the top piece. I'm going to tuck it all the way in. Just like that. If I feel like anything is being caught on there, I can just kind of use a screwdriver to, to make sure that it's pressed in all the way. This one's completely fine. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get my plastic piece. And the plastic piece should go in relatively easy. If it's getting, if it feels like extremely hard to put in, where you're putting so much force, uh, then, it's, then, then the fabric isn't put in correctly. So you probably have to take it out and do it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and line it up and I'm gonna push it in. You see how easy it's going in? That's as easy as the plastic rod should go. 
So I'm gonna do that. And once that's in there like that, you see it, it's basically ready to lay over. I'm gonna continue to the next side, doing exactly the same thing. I'm gonna grab this here, I'm gonna tuck in the bottom first. I'm gonna tuck in the bottom first, just as I did with the top side. As I'm tucking in, I'm pulling up on this side, tucking, I'm pulling up all at the same time. That's gonna make sure that we get a nice and snug fit. Perfect. And now that I have that in there, I'm gonna tuck in the top side. Just like that. Now that's nice and tucked in, I'm gonna grab my piece of plastic. I'm gonna insert it lined up to the beginning and I'm gonna go ahead and just push it in. Just like that. So now it's in there and that's easy. I'm gonna do the last two sides. Okay, so we're gonna grab a piece of plastic here, line it up to the edge of where the fabric starts. And we're gonna go ahead and insert it directly into the channel, just like that. See on this one, I started a little bit too late, so it doesn't go all the way in, so let's just go ahead and remove it. And just make sure that you're starting it exactly where, the, where it begins so that you can have enough slack at the end so that it fits perfectly inside of there. There you go. Now that fits great. And we're going to do the last uh, the last piece of plastic all the way at the end. Now we're going to repeat the same thing as we did before. We're going to make sure that this is centered. We're going to start on one end stick in the bottom piece while we're pulling up. And once we have all that in there, do the same thing for the top. Just insert it into that channel. All of that is in there. We're going to grab our piece of plastic and insert it into the channel. And that's it. Now we're done with that piece. Uh, the next piece is to put this on its side. We're going to slightly open it once again. And um, we're gonna go ahead and screw in those uh, those clips. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and remember we're gonna look out for the side that has the motor because that's the side that has the wire harness. So it's on this side here. I'm gonna go ahead and crack this side open. And the harness is right over here. So I'm gonna leave this side angled just like that. I'm gonna start off by the side that has the zipper. I'm gonna align it to the center here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the side over here, one end, one corner. And remember, this has this this has this piece of plastic, which is where it's gonna line up. So I'm gonna push this in. I'm gonna I'm gonna start by putting the piece of plastic over these two pieces, and then I'm gonna push this last piece in. So I'm gonna go like that, and then I'm gonna push it in just like this. And now that's been engaged, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. It's gonna be a little bit harder than last time because remember, once we washed it, um, it retightened. So it's gonna be a little bit harder to put on than when you took off. We're gonna do this all the way around. Just like that. It is a little bit hard to push down. Um, if it's too hard for you to push down, then go ahead and line it up with your fingers just like that. And then you can use a little screwdriver to press it into position if that's easier for you. I, I can. I'm okay doing it by my hands, but that's probably because I've done over a hundred of these by now. Um, so we're gonna do it all the way around, being careful with the wire harness. We're not gonna tighten them yet because we wanna make sure that we have them on 
all the way correctly, and then once they're correctly on all the way around, then we're gonna go ahead and start tightening uh, each one of the screws. Or else what ends up happening is that you pull too much on one side and then the mesh looks kind of lopsided. So I'm gonna finish doing this to this side, and once I'm done, I'm gonna close it up, I'm gonna turn it on its side, and then open it up and do the other side. Uh, obviously, just to make sure that we're protecting the wire harness um, and we're not putting extra pressure on that harness and uh, causing damage to the circuit board uh, at the bottom. So, um, I think I'm done with this side here. I'm gonna do one more to go on this side. that so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close it now that it's closed get it put it on its side open it again and I'm going to finish the last couple of clips that I need to be able to fully screw this back together once you're at this point, this is about 90% done. The rest is fairly easy. Actually, I mean, I would probably consider this a super easy thing to do. It's just a little time consuming and uh, it might seem a, uh, it might seem difficult, um, but it's really not. It, it's fairly simple. It's just taking your time on doing stuff like this. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and I've put all of those clips, they're all engaged. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten the screws to create tension to make the mesh nice and tight fitting. So right now, most of the screws are a little bit out. All I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to line up this screw so that the screw is perpendicular to this line here. Okay, so I'm going to tighten it up. And once the, once this uh, uh, grabbing point or this, this hook is perpendicular to this, that's usually when I stop. You could obviously put more tension, but I, I find it unnecessary. That's plenty of tension there. That's good. I'm gonna do it to everything on this side here. And then once I'm done doing it to this side, I'm gonna flip it over, same way that we've been showing. And we're gonna do the final side over there. And we're gonna do the same technique that we did over there. We're gonna kinda of just, being careful not to mess with the harness, we're gonna offset it a little bit just to give us enough space to access these hooks on this side. done with these we're gonna close it up give it the final spin put it back on its side open it at an angle and we're gonna do the last couple of anchors over here
Okay. They're all nice and tight in. The, the mesh feels great. I'm going to go ahead and, and give it a final adjustment just like that. I'm going to go ahead and give it, its, make sure it's nice and snug. It's nice and snug and everything fits perfectly. Once everything is nice fitting and everything is lined up, now I can go ahead. I'm going to grab my bag of screws and I'm going to start tightening all of the exterior screws, all 20 something of them. And then for this process, usually what I do is I get my grill, or my, my drill, put it at level one if you're using one, and then go ahead and put it down to like a, a five. And that way you don't have to worry about accidentally stripping one of the screws because you know it is a plastic base. See, it auto stops once it hits that torque speed. Um, and just do it all the way around. Okay, I do have to apologize. Unfortunately, I lost a little bit of audio on this clip, so I'm going to do a quick voiceover. Uh, what I'm going to explain here is how to properly align these brown brackets. It's very easy. A lot of people, unfortunately, overthink this, this part, but the brackets themselves tell you exactly how uh, they need to go. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to look at the center uh, center circle of the brackets and you're going to want to align it to uh, this circle on this new base. So you see that circle there? We're going to align it to the circle of the center circle of the bracket. Once you align it there, um, you can see it through the top uh, into the bottom. Um, that's it. That's how easy it is. Um, the next part um, that is going to come up next uh, it requires a little bit of further aligning, but that should be pretty straightforward. As long as you first start off with having those two brackets there, brackets. Um, then uh, you should be good moving forward. So we're going to line up. Speaker side is always opposite to where the motor is. So speaker side over here. And we're going to lay it on one. We're going to lay it down just like that. Careful not to mess with those brown brackets. And we're going to slide the cables through, which is going to be one of the left-hand sensors cables. They're going to come in through here. And then we're going to have uh, the right-hand sensor plus the speaker cable. We're all going to go through here. Just like that. Once these two are aligned, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop the sled right to the center. Okay, now, you get, now what you need to do next is really easy. Now you have to align the sled to the center of the other piece. So once it's pushed down all the way, to do that, you're going to look through here. Right in through here. Okay, and there's two knobs, two little nubs that are coming out. One right there and one right there. All we have to do is make sure that those are centered to that one, that one's centered to that one, this one's centered to this one, and this one's centered to this one. Once that's centered, then we're good to go. Everything's gonna line up fine in the next step. This particular model has the uh, has the, the, this, this center pen, so I'm gonna drop it in there. We're gonna apply firmly a little bit of pressure and twist to the right, just one half turn, and that's going to lock in its place. We're going to go ahead and grab the speaker wire, re-engage that cable, you know, being extra careful not to damage the contacts, just like that. We're going to do the same thing to the right side, sensor cable, and we're going to put it through its little cable holder there. Exactly the same thing to the left side. Cable. Put it through its holder right there. And if it moves on you just like how it just did with me, don't, it's no big deal. Um, just go ahead and go back to realign those circles right here. Like I mentioned, that's centered. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to go ahead 
and you're going to grab your metal piece and um, you know, place it over. Obviously, this is this is the protector for the speaker. So I'm going to grab it and I'll put it over just like that. Put this one just like that. I'm going to get the center one for this side. I'm going to drop it right there. Center one for this side. I'm going to drop it right there. I'm going to get my screwdriver. I'm going to press it in for about five seconds. Same thing here for about five seconds. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the other two sides. I don't want to fully tighten it yet. I just want to just get it somewhat tightened. Now you know that you got it right because you'll see these stick out a little bit more. Uh, this one's going to stick out too much, so I probably need to screw it in a little bit more. You see now the screw is starting to lift up. That means that we were able to engage that center, that center one. So I'm going to do the next one over, the next one over. And do these over here. And once I've got them all pan tight, uh, somewhat pan tight, and then I'm gonna go back with my drill, back to that same level five that we left it on, to make sure we don't over torque it. And obviously, we're just using a. A traditional screwdriver that's fine too. just go ahead and just tighten it up to where you start feeling um, a moderate amount of resistance and and you're not kind of over tightening or feel as if you know you're, you're tightening too much okay those are all done that was very easy um, the, the next piece of the puzzle is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reinsert the, the mesh uh, the last piece of the mesh and that's fairly easy um, especially if uh, you went ahead and you removed the brackets you removed the brackets what you know fairly easy from that point if you didn't uh, it's still easy but just it's a little bit uh, a little bit more resistance so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the center right over here I'm gonna do the same thing basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our, our screwdriver we're gonna get it, we're gonna put it right here. We're gonna open this up, put it right here, and then we're gonna use this to press down. So I'm gonna press down mostly with my finger, and then when I'm ready to get that last part, I'm gonna use the screwdriver. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna push it down so that engages. And like I said before, uh, keep it into consideration that this mesh is going to be a lot more firmer than it was before so it's going to be a lot more resistance than when you took it off uh, so you're going to get it you're going to push it in just like that i'm going to do it all the way around There you go. Now we're all done. Uh, that was fairly, uh, fairly simple. Um, the last piece of the puzzle is obviously putting in the clips. Um, I haven't uh, cleaned my clips yet, uh, but I'll go ahead and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. 
we're gonna grab our clips here. We're gonna grab them just like this and just simply just push them down. Easy. If for some reason they're not pressing down, um, then it's most likely you don't have this correctly on. So go ahead and remove it and push it back in if you're having any issues with them not engaging. But you do it all the way around and you are done. Fairly easy. It's uh, probably a lot easier than people uh, uh, a lot easier than people think. Um, it's like for instance, this one here wasn't going down correctly, so I'm just kind of push it down a little bit, make sure that this is all aligned, that this is in there just like that, and I can go ahead and push it in. Now it goes in. All right. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into the video. Um, take a look at all the links. I have everything that I use linked at the bottom below. Uh, if you found this information useful, feel free to donate to um, our YouTube page via the uh, link below. It helps us create more and more content for more DIY videos. I don't charge for any repairs. I've been doing this for a long time, helping people fix their snooze. Um, I'm in the Southern California area, so if someone ever has any issues, you guys can always DM me, send me a message. Uh, I'm on Reddit uh, as well. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to message. I hope that this really helped you guys out.